Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex, your host, and this is another episode of Career Guidance. This is Reddit Advice. Today is actually Friday, August 5th, 2022. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I seen I seen this question here posted about 20 hours ago asking what is the most realistic way to become a millionaire? Do I be a team member for some big startup like the movies say? Question mark. That's what they're asking. What is the most realistic way to become a millionaire? Do I be a team member Of some big startup. Of some (laughs) big startup. Okay. Like the movies say, there's no way of telling whether or not a startup will be big or small. If a startup is big, then they've already got capital. More than likely, they've been bankrolled. Right? They've been propped up. They've already been capitalized. If they are big. Now again, big is relative. Maybe they have systems in place that make them more efficient to better economize and scale their growth. So, I mean, maybe in that sense, they they are big, projected to be big. They've got large projections. They've got big dreams. And those dreams are actually realistic and attainable given the amount of resources and, and human and material capital they have to do it with. Now... I'm still going to do this under 30 minutes. This is this counts as a 30 minutes free consultation. If you would like actual advice, something personalized to yourself, feel free to reach out to us directly. We can set up a rate for you. This is what I do on a regular basis. Provide professional, legal, career, academic advice. Now, uh, coming from a corporate cowboy, right? Coming from a corporate cowboy... The most realistic way to become a millionaire is is to work for it. Obviously, it's not just going to fall on your lap. The opportunity might, right? But you still have to work to take advantage of said opportunity. It isn't all luck. Fortune, fortune favors the brave. Fortune favors the bold. And so you must be brave. You must be bold. In the face, in the face of uncertainty. Because it's still uncertain whether you become a millionaire. Shit, you could go to work for one of these big, quote-unquote, big startups. And the contract you sign with them is shit. If you don't know how to negotiate. If you don't know how to be brave and be bold. You could be screwed out of your potentially... Out of your potential millionaire status. If you don't know what you are looking for. If you don't, need, if you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. You could be taken for a ride. That said. Without even looking at the comments. Because I do want to look at the comments. There's almost 700 of these bitches on there. There's 659 comments as of now. 659 comments and i'm sure they're all saying something like fucking buy a zip and flip it and then flip it twice and flip it four times i mean a zip is an ounce buy an ounce and fucking flip it. <laughs> that's the that's uh that's high risk high reward right well i mean it depends again it could be high risk and you could just be a shitty hustler and low reward right so the risk would not even be worth the reward but me personally having done a lot a lot of illegitimate shit in my time and am now moving into a more legitimate space have been moving in a more legitimate fashion i personally believe everyone has at least one million dollar idea but everyone has one million dollar idea everyone Everyone has $1 million idea. If you've held a job, and in some instances, even if you haven't held a job, if you've had, I don't know, some some childhood dream of uh, flying cars, that's a million dollar idea. 
the only downside to that is that not many people know how to pursue that million dollar idea, how to actually measure and track and achieve and attain progress and advancement toward that million dollar goal. I'm here to help. This is what this free advice is for. And if you need something more personalized for your circumstances, for your situation, the situation you currently find yourself in, you can't break out and yet have a million dollar idea, right? Me personally, because the mission is not for profit. My mission is to create millionaires. And if not millionaires, then people who handle millions. I handle millions. I'm no millionaire. I'm no millionaire, but I handle millions. That's another episode of the podcast where I go into what expenses look like, what what business model I run, whether or not there are for-profit operations that then in turn fuel the nonprofit mission, a subsidiary, if you will. Yes, there are subsidiaries. There ought to be. If there weren't, then I'd be reliant on government grants and charity, which that's nice and all, but then that comes with oversight. That comes with control. That's not mine. That comes with outside control. Motherfuckers who want to say in how this mission should be accomplished. Motherfuckers who aren't corporate cowboys. The most realistic way of becoming a millionaire is to have a million dollar idea. Fuck it. Think big. Have a billion dollar idea. You have a trillion dollar idea? I'm sure someone, if it ain't you, someone close to you within six degrees of separation has that idea. You want to put that idea down on paper. Don't share it with anybody else. Definitely don't share it with your manager if you're at work. If your million dollar idea, let, let me let me paint it to you as simply as possible. And this will just be in the workplace because I want to assume that this person, I would like to assume that this person is asking, do they be a member? Do I be a member? <laughs> Do I be a member of some big startup like the movies say? Well, I don't I don't see a lot of movies actually. Uh, I don't watch a lot of movies, period. But I want to say that movies nowadays serve to entertain. I doubt they're promoting startups. I doubt they're promoting small business. And if they are, kudos to them. Chops to them. Because they're essentially creating their own competition. And that's the key is to become the competition to the much larger and slower moving whales in the market. Now you can, you may be able to accomplish that from the inside. Say you work for a fortune 500 company. Say you work for a fortune 500, you have a good idea, right? You have a good idea. You yourself are maybe lower level, a subordinate to somebody else. You have a supervisor. You might be entry level. It might be your first fucking week or your first month. You might have gotten past the probationary period. You might have gotten past the three months or however long probation seems to last. If I mean, if it lasts longer than six months, if it lasts longer than six months, I mean, that's a red flag. They could fire you at up, up to six months and after or later for any reason, for, for, for no reason. It could be your first year, your first five years on the job. Within 10 years, you might have an idea. If you haven't moved up within five years, if you haven't moved up at least once or twice, that's an issue. That's a red flag. The most realistic way of becoming a millionaire is becoming indispensable to a much larger source of income. It's becoming indispensable to the company that you're at. Being dependable, securing the bag, 
inside of the organization. And that's going to mean taking on responsibility, fulfilling obligations, being a team player, contributing to the bottom line, right? Looking out for the top of the line and taking care of the bottom line. Seeking top of the line service and creating bottom of the line. Bottom line value. Now you want to become a millionaire even faster. It requires more work. I mean, because what I just said before it just entails that you show up for work. It could be it could be just showing up for the check. But as long as you're in a good mood, as long as you know how to work with people, as long as you know how to work people, as long as you are a people person, you've got the social skill to be a manager and move up maybe on the operations side or on the service side, then you have potential to move up. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be paid a, a salary of a million dollars a year. Not necessarily. It's, it might be less. And it might be more. That's all dependent on your circumstances. What size of company you are in. Because it might not be Fortune 500. It might be something smaller. But your salary will grow. I feel like this question is broad enough to ask, like, how do you, how do you cure cancer? What's the most realistic way of curing cancer? I mean, I'm sure there are already cures out there. I'm sure there are treatments that eliminate cancer that might not be legally or medically classified as a cure but i feel like eliminating or reverting cancer is similar to a cure i'm you know i'm treating that as a legal disclaimer i don't want this episode to get banned right but there's so much gray area there's so much gray area in this question that the most realistic way of becoming a millionaire is simply putting in work. Putting in the work. Say you're on the job. Say you're on the job. And I've, I've gone over this scenario before. But it's worth repeating. Because there are a lot of people in this position who want to be a millionaire. And want the most realistic way of doing it. And I'm going to give you the most real way of doing it. And it requires work. You're on the job, you're entry level, you're a subordinate, right? You've got superiors. If you don't want to go up through the ranks, it's called um, seniority, right? If you just don't want to get promoted via seniority because, you know, maybe maybe your manager, maybe your manager is a good manager. And, uh, I mean, they're fucking hard to come by. They're few and far in between, but maybe they are good, right? But you don't get promoted if they don't get promoted, type situation you don't get promoted if they don't leave type situation you could be stuck in your position for years for decades and never fucking move up are you satisfied are you content are you complacent with your position no no you shouldn't be you shouldn't be if you want to become a millionaire a corporate cowboy would do it moving. Not necessarily eliminate your manager if they are good. If they are good people, if they are good folks, don't, right? Don't plot on, you know, on their livelihood. What you could do is you have a good idea. A million dollar idea. Do not, do not take that idea to your manager. Do not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Doesn't matter if they are good or bad manager. It's even less. You, you definitely don't want to take it to a shitty manager. A shitty manager wouldn't know what to do with it. A shitty manager would shoot your idea down and be like, get back to work. We don't pay you to think. Get, get back to work. We're, we're not paying you to fucking use your brain. <laughs> we pay you to, you know, do entry level shit. They pay me to use my brain. And I say, get back to work. Don't. Don't take it to your manager. You have a good idea. Let's say you work in, an, in a pen-making factory, in a factory that makes pen. This is a fucking classic example of, um, of compartmentalization, right? And those of you who've 
those of you who have studied business management are going to be familiar with this, with, with the Taylorist. With the Taylorist view, it's called Taylorism. Uh, T-A-Y-L-O-R-I-S-M. Taylorism. It's very utilitarian. And essentially what you do is you break up, you break up every single little step of making a pen. A pen. A metal pen. Like a push pin. Like a thumbtack, essentially. You take every little, every little step in making that pen. And you compartmentalize it into steps. Where instead of one person grabbing a metal rod, having to shave it or file it down to appropriate size to put the head on it, you know, to flatten the one side or to, or to fix a small plastic ball at the end of it to form the grab end of it and then take the other side and file it down and shape it into a a a sharp needle like end take every single one of those steps that person might take 5 5 to 10 to 15 minutes to make one pin right instead you have one person and you have them you have multiple people in stations. So you have one person at one station and then they receive a pile, a pile of, of small metal rods. And what that person does is file one rod down into the size for the pin, the appropriate size, does the cutting and the filing for the appropriate size and passes it to the next station. And the next station then affixes the plastic head or, or flattens the head to have it become the push pin, to have it become a pin. And then that person passes it down to the next station, to the last station, let's say, and sharpens it to a fine point to make it sharp, to make it the final product that is a push pin. And the first person can do their job by filing down pin rods, a hundred, a hundred pin rods in maybe two minutes. And the next person could have fixed the heads on a hundred push rods in maybe two minutes also. And the last person could sharpen up, sharpen them up and file them in maybe two minutes. So at the end, you have 100 pins done in two minute intervals, a total of three stations at two minutes each. That's six minutes total. You have 100 pins completed under six minutes, potentially under six minutes. And nowadays you're talking about mechanizing the whole process. Nowadays you, you are essentially mechanizing the whole process. You no longer even have people on the line. They're all machines doing it. And they're still in different stations. Because that type of automation, that type of compartmentalization and automation together makes the whole process more efficient. Whereas one worker might have had to know how to make a pin from a push rod from beginning to end. The one worker at the beginning of the assembly line, let's call it, only has to know how to file down the rod to pin size and the next person how to affix the head to the pin only and the last person how to put a sharp point on a pin they don't need to know anything else the first person made a pin the, the, in our first example the one worker made a pin made one pin in five minutes and in the second example they're handling they're handling a hundred pins at a time in two minute intervals. Not essentially millionaires, but handling millions in product. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So I handle millions. I'm no millionaire. I choose not to be. I choose not to be. If I want to analogize it further, it's having million dollar ideas and then formalizing them into something material 
You want to take the abstract, the subjective, the idea, and don't take it to your manager because your manager doesn't see it, doesn't have the vision like you do. What you need, what you need is a little discipline. You need to put it down on paper. You need to pursue it. You need to investigate it, explore it, research it. In our pen making, in our pen factory, what if the person in the middle, the person in the middle who's affixing the heads to the pens, finds a better way to do it? I know this is leading towards mechanical auto automation, right? But what if the person in the middle, instead of using their hands, creates a small contraption that could fit five pins onto it, five, ten, five or ten pins? It's just an example. Five pins on it, and they can dip them into the plastic or the wax or whatever they use, whatever polymer they use, or, or, or whatever flattening machine that they use to flatten five heads at a time and then passes those off. You think that worker wants to take that idea? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they always fucking do because they don't know better. You think that worker should take that idea, that contraption that they made to their manager? I'm sure the manager would like that. I'm sure the CEO, the president of the company would fucking love it. Why? Because they can just take your idea. And a lot of employment contracts have that, have that type of stipulation in it. If you, if you're not sure if your employment contract has that, you ought to go look it up. You should take your employment contract. And if you're not reading it, have an employment lawyer, read it, have some kind of contracts lawyer, read it. I read contracts, send it to me. I'll let you know. Obviously it's going to cost you because that's a personal, that's a personal matter of business. That's something you do personally. You should be able to read it. And if you're not, you should be able to read it. If you are not able to, then seek assistance to be sure that you aren't getting fucked. If you come up with that contraption and you, you expose it to your manager, you expose yourself to the liability of having that idea stolen from you having that idea taken from you, you won't be compensated for it. You won't be compensated for it. It's hard. It's tough. It's a tough decision to make. We're already into this 23 minutes of a 30 minute consultation. So you have a good idea? Formalize it. Put it down on paper. You compartmentalize it. You make it stepwise. You create the steps for it and how to how to integrate it if not within the organization you are in maybe within the entire industry and this might this might call for another episode but i'm gonna keep this at 30 minutes if you have a good idea keep it to your fucking self why because it belongs to you it belongs to you you can put it down on paper later on that person in the middle that person in the middle of the assembly line who came up with that contraption to flatten five pin heads at a time or, or you know, affix five pin heads at a time. If they put that down on paper, create some type of blueprint, create some type of business process, some type of business model to it, they formalize their idea and with some assistance if they need, if they aren't capable in and of themselves to act, to be a corporate cowboy and sell or license that idea to their own company, then they ought to seek some type of legal counsel, some type of professional counsel. And that's what the corporate cowboys are here for. What better way to become a millionaire and actually leave Leave your employment. You don't have to stay there while they use the idea. That's the whole point of selling it or licensing it. You can license it to the company, to the organization, to the corporation, and you become the corporate cowboy. You can just go home and collect the check 
Every time they use that license, every time they use that contraption, you get paid out. You get a royalty off of every pin made, off of every pin that contraption touches, you get money. That to me is the smartest. That to me is the smartest way of doing things. But you have to know how to handle millions to become a millionaire. And even then, it's a never ending process. Like I said, I'm no millionaire. And I enjoy handling millions. Why? Because sure, being a millionaire is nice. I'm sure it provides you access to different spheres of influence. But knowing how to handle millions means you know how to handle millionaires. That's what you ought to learn. You ought to learn how to handle millions. Let's take a look at a couple of these comments. First comment says, job jump. Okay. Save good portion on your money, invest in stocks and real estate. As someone that has been a part of startups and the startup culture, very few will get you rich and most fail hard. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Job jump. Corporate cowboy would do that. I mean, you might grow frustrated if you have a good idea. You're going to grow frustrated that managers aren't hearing you out. They don't want to fucking know about it. A lot of managers actually believe good ideas lead to more work. So of course they're going to shoot that shit down. Uh, the next relevant question here. Let's collapse this. Let's collapse this one right here. The next, the next relevant comment says, this doesn't get brought up often. It says, but if you have a spouse, their financial situation and goals should ideally mirror yours. Then it's not so hard. Two people with good credit, no or minimal debt with moderate incomes can support a single household while still savings and investing on schedule and really accelerate their net worth as a couple much more than someone who is single. Having a spouse with no spending control, poor credit, lots of debt becomes your problem. I'm not saying you need to turn into a gold digger, but I am just telling you an excerpt and lesson from the la- from the past 10 years in my life, it says, and us passing that Northwest, what's that say? That net worth, I'm assuming, net worth milestone together. Being aligned in how we live, how we contribute, and where we want to go. Yeah, if you have a partner on your team, even better, even better. That just about summarizes it. Have a partner on your team who's got the same goals as you do. The first one said job jump. Job jump and take the fucking long way out. Job jump, get better salaries, take your money, save it, invest. They say invest it in stocks. I'm assuming what blue chips, because those are the safest invested in blue chips and real estate. Real estate is a good idea, but I mean, it takes a certain level of net worth and know how to know what the fuck you're doing in real estate. This next one says, spend less than you make and invest heavily in a diverse set of assets, start a business or be born rich. Sounds easy enough. Just gotta be born to the right family. (laughs) Says your start a business, dude. Starting a business is increasingly difficult. Why do you think I'm going nonprofit so I can just continue bankrolling that shit, so I can continue just rolling it over and reinvesting it? Because starting a business is difficult. You got to pay all sorts of fucking business taxes, but not a nonprofit. A nonprofit, you can still live moderately, right? You can still live moderately and grow, expand, grow the fuck out of the business. Without having to, uh, without having, without having to be tied down to regulation. Last one here because we're at thirty now. Says start early and save always. Don't beat the market. Be content to stay with it. It says develop skills, be valuable, job hop and get raises. 
That's always a good idea to job hop. I'm not going to say just always be job hopping around, but but definitely develop skills and become valuable. I said that. Be indispensable. Become indispensable. Somebody else says here, get profit sharing or work for a public company with ESPP. Some type of employee shared profit program. Some type of employee benefits program. I'm assuming that's what ESPP means. It's a, it's a, it's an employee shared profits plan, some type of benefits plan. Now you could do that, get profit sharing, but then what? Are you going to go scout for a company that, that provides, that advertises profit sharing? Or are you going to be the corporate cowboy? Are you going to bend the corporation to your will? and negotiate your worth. It could be having a good idea, or it could be having developed the type of skill that makes you increasingly valuable, indispensable, I said. And you're able to negotiate for yourself, not just your brain, not just your good idea, your million dollar idea, but you negotiating for yourself, sharing in the profit. You become a shareholder in the corporation based on what your capabilities are. Continuing, it says a 401k, uh, HSA, a Roth. So you got Roth IRAs, you got health spending accounts or health savings accounts. Side gig, it says a side gig, get a side gig. A rental property is great, but not for everyone they say, I've done well with it. Buy good cars and get 10 years out of them. That's a plan even a dummy like me can do. They are 48, male, a first-generation millionaire. It's a great idea. Those are all great ideas. But again, real estate, if this person had has a great point that says rental property is great, but not for everyone. You get into real estate into investing or property management, you ought to know what the fuck you are doing. That's a whole other lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Unless you have a management company, unless you hire out a management company that is going to come in and run the shit for you, and again, you're just taking a cut off of the top, you're going to be pretty fucking busy. You're going to be pretty fucking active. Because I don't think the original question was how do I avoid working? It was the most realistic way of becoming a millionaire. And the most realistic way is going to be to hustle. You don't have to fucking work for it. Not some corporate cowboy shit. You can follow us on Instagram. That's the corporate cowboys. It's got a Z at the end. A Z. Z like Z. Z like Zeta. There's a Patreon page. That shit is live. There's many tiers to it, of course. You can join any one of them and support. Just support the cause, generally. Or you could be a, a more higher tier, the upper tier, and you could send requests. You have questions. It's a form of personal counseling. If you require it, you'll have it. From corporate cowboys. And if you want to do something personal. On a professional basis. Then get in contact with us. We have an hourly rate. We can do it by the projects. Depending on depending on the scale. Depending on the size and scale of uh, the said project. Of your idea. If you have an idea. Something similar to that. But if you just want. You know common career guidance. Then watch the videos. Pay attention. Because every now and then Reddit has good questions, and we have advice. Now, there's 659 comments. I only read four of them. So there are people out there giving good advice. Some of it comes from life experience. Some of it comes from professional experience. Some of it comes from, from having read from, from book experience, academic, scholarly experience. And every now and then, when I'm surfing on the web, 
I hit up forums like this. I'm not going to put out every single forum that I visit, but I will be using Reddit for the content on the podcast. I feel because Reddit has a great mix of people. It's not the best representative population. It's not the perfect population representation. But they've got very good contributors, very good questions. You want to send a donation? By all means, do that. There's a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App floating around. Share this with your friends, with your family. The most realistic way to become a millionaire. This has been Career Guidance with Alex, a corporate cowboy. Enjoy the rest of your day.